Hey everybody, and welcome back to our series where we're walking through the five things you need to use multi-tracks. Now in the description of this video, I have tons of links. First to our uh, video where I roll out and introduce the concept of the five things you need to use multi-tracks. Then we talk through um, each of the individual components, uh, what computer to buy, how to, to, how to best buy a Mac to use on stage for tracks. Um, then we talk about which version of Ableton Live you need to use tracks. And in today's video, uh, we're gonna talk about the third thing you need to use multi-tracks, which is a audio interface, uh, or maybe better said, a way to get audio out of your computer. And this is perhaps the most important part because you could have a MIDI controller, you could have in-ears, you could have Ableton Live, you could have a computer, but if no one can hear it, then what's the point? Now, I've talked a lot on this channel about um, uh, my suggestions for audio interfaces, audio interfaces under $500, shared a lot of pro tips, hopefully what you would consider pro tips, in helping you decide what audio interface you should use on stage. And in today's video, I wanna summarize uh, um, a lot of those concepts, again, in the description of this video, you'll find links to each of them. But what I wanna talk about in this video is the third thing we need to use multi-tracks is an audio interface. So what are some tips that we need in order to choose an audio interface, in particular, an audio interface for live performance? Here we go, tip number one, don't buy a two-channel interface. If you buy a two-channel audio interface, and I've, again, talked about this before, link in the description of this video, then you're limited to only two outputs. You're limited to one for click, for slates, for cues, for guide track, whatever you wanna call it. And then two is one for mono tracks. That means you can't have stereo tracks plus a click track because in order to use tracks, you must have a click track. So do not buy a two channel interface. Instead of buying a two channel interface, here's what I would suggest. Tip number two, start with a Hosa CMP 153 or 159. Uh, this, this cable, I've probably sold more of these cables than any other person uh, um, in, in the world. And so Hosa, I'm expecting my affiliate payout check here at some point in the future. But these cables are great. And here's what they do. Uh, again, I'll link uh, to the videos in the description of this video showing you how to use this cable to connect to your computer to get click and tracks and separate them from Ableton Live to run them directly to your soundboard. I walk you through how to do all of that. But this cable right now at the moment, the CMP 153 is 730. I would highly suggest just going ahead and buying the five pack. Uh, these are kind of like capos. Once you lend them out to someone to let them borrow them, uh, you will not get them back. So go ahead and buy the Hosa CMP uh, 153. What's great about this is you can use the headphone output of your computer directly into some direct boxes into your soundboard. Again, I walk through that entire process um, in a separate video. So number one, don't buy a two channel interface. Number two, start with a Hosa CMP 153 and 159. The 159 is just a little longer cable. Um, number three, tip for choosing an audio interface for live performance is focus more on outputs than inputs. I've told this story before, but I remember talking to someone who was bragging on their brand new playback rig that they put together and they were bragging about how pristine the preamps and how many preamps and inputs they had into their interface. And I said, oh, that's cool. So like you're processing audio on stage, you're doing like live vocal tuning. And they said, well, no, no, we're running tracks. And I said, well, why does it matter how good your preamps are if you're running tracks? You're taking digital to analog. You're not taking analog to digital to process and then back out to analog. And they kind of went like, Oh, and they had that moment of, oh crap, I think I just may have spent thousands of dollars I didn't need. So when you're buying a audio interface, and again, uh, let me pause for a second. If you're buying an audio interface, it's going to be dual purpose, both for live and in the studio, then yes, you should consider the preamps. You should consider how many inputs you have um, into your computer to make sure you have enough for what you need. But if you're looking for an audio interface, again, what's the title of this video? Choosing tips or choosing an audio interface for live performance. If that's what you're looking for then we're focusing more on outputs as opposed to inputs. Here's what I suggest, at least four outputs. Again, go back to tip number one, don't buy a two channel interface. I would suggest at least uh, four outputs, four to six is like, to me, a good entry point, a good starting point. Uh, the Audio 4C from iConnectivity, uh, I'll pull this up real quick for you guys, is, is my favorite kind of like entry point interface. And so um, this has six outputs, four outputs plus uh, a headphone output, which serves as five and six. Uh, the 4C does some really cool, powerful things. They market it as the problem solver. Uh, but there you can see, there's our outputs on the back of that. Plus we have uh, four really great uh, preamps and inputs. But when it comes to audio interfaces, focus more on outputs than inputs. I would suggest anyone from four to six, but the sweet spot really is anywhere from eight to 10. 
And then the more you rely on tracks, then you're probably looking more at like a 16 output interface, 12 to 16, or maybe even more. Uh, if that's you and you're looking for more outputs, then consider tip number four, consider Dante or AVB. Um, uh, there's some solutions that use sound grid, things like that, but network audio. Uh, and what that means is you could use a, a really cool tool, which um, was actually just now is, uh, is supported uh, on M1 officially, and that's Dante Virtual Sound Card. You can see uh, the wait is over. Dante Virtual Sound Card is ready for the latest generation of computers and operating systems with both support for Windows 11 PCs and Mac OS 12 on Apple Silicon and Intel Macs. So for 50 bucks, I can get up to 64 inputs and outputs from my computer using a single ethernet cable, and that's using Dante, which, Dante is at an interesting time right now. I mean, as is everything, there's a, a limit of Dante enabled devices, but if you've already got a Dante infrastructure and if you're in a installed setting, um, um, uh, like a concert venue, uh, a church, you're probably using Dante as your main infrastructure for your audio. So all you have to do is just take an ethernet cable to come out of your computer to plug into your network switch. Um, uh, as I mentioned, lots of links in this video, uh, I'll link to a video that I have showing how to use Dante virtual sound card with Ableton Live. But this is pretty incredible. If you need high track count, you want a uh, uh, real simplicity, then consider using Dante AVB, some sort of audio networking standard. And then number five, um, particularly as a tip, if you're relying heavily on tracks, uh, playing and performing with tracks, then consider redundancy. There's no better redundant solution than the Play Audio 12. Uh, again, full disclosure, I do some work with iConnectivity. I love their products. That's why I do work with them. Um, but, uh, the play audio 12 is the best solution for redundancy. Yes, there's other solutions, but it's the most affordable and it's the best solution for redundancy, not just for audio, but MIDI redundancy as well. Um, the other day, uh, my buddy Daniel texted me and he said, um, Hey, <coughs> I'm, I'm looking to build this setup for this marching band, uh, that I'm working with. And, and, um, he, he's asking, you know what, I want to do this. I want to do this MIDI redundancy, audio redundancy. What should I buy? And, uh, and I said, play audio 12. And he said, at the time when we were talking, he said, well, it looks like they're out until, you know, a couple of weeks away. Uh, what else do you suggest? And I said, well, you could go this route, but it would be four times the amount of money. Plus it won't do MIDI redundancy. And really quickly, we kind of landed on, okay, it's worth the wait for him to wait to get the play audio 12, because that's, what's going to unlock all those abilities. Redundancy is basically the idea. If you look at, uh, the play audio 12 here, we have these two USB ports, uh, port one and port two. You can see it really well right here. So port one goes to computer A, this would go to computer B, and you can set it up to where if computer A were to fail, it would automatically switch to computer B. Or you could do my personal preference, plug into this control input here and uh, use a foot switch um, to basically switch from uh, machine A, computer A to machine B. So when you're thinking about choosing an audio interface for live performance, think about, um, do I need redundancy? Is this a scenario where it's kind of like do or die? We got to get it right. If so, then you need redundancy. If you need redundancy, just trust me, just buy a play audio 12. It's, it's the way you should go. So, uh, when it comes to tips for choosing an audio interface really quickly, again, number one, tip number one, don't buy a two channel interface. Number two, um, buy and start with a Hosa CMP 153, 159 cable. I've got links in the description of this video to those. Um, number three, focus more on outputs and inputs. Sweet spot, a good sweet spot for, or let's say a good starting point would be four to six outputs. A good sweet spot would be eight to 10. And beyond that, we're looking, you know, to 12 to 16 outputs, maybe even more. If you need more outputs than that, Tip number four, consider a networked audio solution like Dante, AVB, or SoundGrid. And then tip number five, if you're relying heavily on tracks, then you need to consider redundancy and there's no better redundant solution than the Play Audio 12. You're a smart person. You're someone interested in gear. You're someone interested in um, uh, using Ableton Live on stage. So you want to make sure you get the right gear. You want to make sure you find gear that you trust and you can rely on um, to make it easy on you. Don't spend hours searching on Amazon, hoping you find something that works or thinking you've suddenly discovered something no one else has discovered to find out it's a cheap piece of junk that doesn't work in the first place. Save yourself time, save yourself effort. Head to from studiosage.com slash gear. Download my free gear guide. I 
tell you all the gear that I suggest for live performance from audio interfaces to in-ears to MIDI controllers and everything in between. Again, you can find that by going to from studio to stage.com slash gear. And then again, like I said, you're a smart person. So you're going to want to see more content like this. So um, on YouTube, hit subscribe to this channel hit the bell icon. And if you download the YouTube app on your phone, you'll be notified every single day when I post new content, which I post content every single day. It's pretty nutty. 10 a.m. Central. You can look at the title and go, sounds like something I'm interested in. Or, hey, I'm going to skip this th today's video and we'll get the next one. Uh, and you'll be notified as long as you hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Um, and you'll see when we post new videos. Thanks so much for watching this. Join me next Saturday. We'll continue the series, but join me tomorrow for Sunday Sound Design uh, and new content again every single day, 10 a.m. Central. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.